Hello Grade 11s and welcome back to our series on intermolecular forces. We have studied the type of intermolecular forces known as van der Waals forces between covalently bonded molecules. However, there are some covalent compounds that contain a special type of dipole-dipole forces known as hydrogen bonds. We will investigate these hydrogen bonds in today's lesson. Hydrogen bonds occur between molecules that contain a hydrogen atom bonded with another small, highly electronegative atom such as nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. The combination of the small mass of the atom and high electronegativity difference creates a very polar bond, resulting in a very polar molecule. The highly electronegative atom of one molecule is attracted to a highly electropositive hydrogen atom in another molecule. These intermolecular forces are called hydrogen bonds. This diagram shows the hydrogen fluoride molecule. The very high electronegativity value of fluorine causes the shared electron pair to be found very close to the fluorine atom. The result is a strongly polar molecule. The molecules then attract one another in what is basically a strong dipole-dipole attraction. Note that hydrogen bonding is specific to certain molecules, whilst dipole-dipole attraction occurs between any polar molecules. So which substances contain hydrogen bonding? This graph shows the boiling points of different hydrides formed by elements in groups 15, 16, and 17 of the periodic table. The general trend within each group is that as the size of the atom to which hydrogen is bonded to increases, so the boiling point increases. However, that is not the case for water, H2O, hydrogen fluoride, HF, and ammonia, NH3. Their boiling points are much higher than their trend would suggest. This is because they have hydrogen bonds between their molecules, which are stronger than the intermolecular forces between the other molecules. As a result, more energy is required in order to separate them to get them to boil. Thus, they have higher boiling points than they would have had if they did not have hydrogen bonds between the molecules. This diagram shows the difference between intermolecular forces and interatomic forces. The interatomic forces are shown in red and are the covalent bonds between the hydrogen and oxygen atoms in the water molecules. The intermolecular forces are the hydrogen bonds that attract one water molecule to another and are shown as green dotted lines. These hydrogen bonds mean that water has some rather unique properties. Let us join Nelly as she investigates these properties of water in more detail. We'll look at an animation to see how these water molecules form. Diatomic oxygen and hydrogen atoms react and bond to form water molecules. Do you see how the oxygen and hydrogen pair shares electrons to bond covalently? This creates an angular molecule. The oxygen atom has a stronger attraction to these shared electrons because it has more positively charged protons in its nucleus than hydrogen. The negatively charged electrons are more attracted to the oxygen protons. This causes the oxygen end to be more negatively charged and the hydrogen side to be more positively charged. Because of this, we call the water molecule a polar molecule. So, back to the water in our glass. There are millions of these water molecules in this glass. How are they arranged? Well, the negative oxygen of this polar molecule is very attracted to the positive hydrogens of other water molecules. This attraction is very strong because of inter molecular forces between water molecules called hydrogen bonding. Scientists called it hydrogen bonding because the forces of attraction are so strong that it was as if the molecules had actually bonded together. In actual fact, it is not bonding at all. No sharing or donating of electrons, just very strong intermolecular forces. These three diagrams show the arrangement of water molecules in three phases, gas, liquid, 
and solid. I would like us to now discuss each one of these phases in more detail. We will start by looking at water molecules in the liquid phase. In a liquid, the water molecules roll over each other, keeping an attraction between one another. These forces of attraction are what make water so important. Without these forces, water would be a gas at room temperature and there would be no life on Earth. When water is heated, the molecules are energized and move faster and faster. When particles are moving, they have kinetic energy. When they have enough kinetic energy to overcome the strong intermolecular forces of attraction, they fly away from each other and form water vapor. Now that we have seen the microscopic model, let's investigate the phase changes of water by melting some ice in the sun and taking some temperature readings. Water is a solid, or ice, at temperatures below zero degrees Celsius. It starts changing phase and reaches its melting point at zero degrees Celsius. The interesting thing to notice is that as long as the ice is melting naturally, the temperature remains at zero degrees until all the ice is gone. Only after the phase change is complete does the temperature slowly increase to room temperature. When heat is added to the liquid water, the temperature rises steadily. But watch what happens as the water starts to boil. As the liquid water changes phase to become a gas, you should notice lots of bubbles form in the liquid and rise to the surface. These bubbles contain water vapor. Obviously, all of the water does not become vapor all at once. Now notice that even though it is continually being heated, the water remains at a constant temperature of about 100 degrees, depending at which altitude you are doing the boiling. We can summarize what we have just observed in a temperature versus time graph. This graph is called the heating curve for water. Let's analyze this graph more closely. Notice that there is a large difference in temperature between the melting point, zero degrees, and the boiling point of water, about 100 degrees Celsius. This large difference in temperature is because of the strength of the intermolecular forces, hydrogen bonds, found in water. Remember, there are a huge number of hydrogen bonds in a single glass of water, and they require lots of energy to break. So, water can absorb a lot of heat before changing phase from a solid to a liquid or from a liquid to a gas. Water can also lose a lot of heat energy before it freezes. Now, at the average temperature on Earth, water is found in its liquid form. Large changes in temperature from this average are needed to cause water to freeze or boil. This is also important in lakes and oceans because they can store, transport and release heat during changes in weather without the temperature changing very much within the water. The temperature of the oceans is very important as it powerfully affects Earth's weather and climates. When water cools, the water molecules have less kinetic energy and the temperature of the water decreases steadily. But close to zero degrees, the molecules begin to rearrange themselves and form lots of hydrogen bonds. In a solid, the water molecules are arranged in a regular pattern called a lattice. This regularity causes the molecules to be further apart than when they roll over each other in liquid form. This means that ice takes up more space than water. Try this as an experiment. Fill two plastic bottles with water. Next, place one in a freezer. What predictions can you make? Have a look. The frozen water now has a greater volume. The mass of the water did not change, so this means that ice is less dense than liquid water. Because ice is less dense than water, it can float on top of liquid water. In colder regions where the temperature drops below zero degrees Celsius, rivers and lakes freeze over, but plants and animals can still survive in the water below the surface ice. 
So far, we have shown that the special intermolecular forces between water molecules are called hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonding gives water all its special properties. Let's look at some more of these. Hydrogen bonding creates a phenomenon called surface tension, where the molecules at the surface of the liquid are attracted to each other sideways and downwards, causing them to stick together. So, the surface of water behaves like an elastic skin that can support a downward force. This surface tension allows insects to walk on water or mosquito larva to live in still water and breathe through the surface. Please remember this fact if you have still water in a lake, pond or reservoir near where you live. Still water should always be boiled before drinking to make sure it's safe. You can also experience the strength of water tension if you jump off a diving board into water. It sometimes stings you, isn't that right? Another property that hydrogen bonding creates is cohesion. The word cohesion means to stick together. Let me demonstrate. This is a very simple experiment that you can also try for yourself. Take a coin and simply drop some water onto it. What happens to the water? The water groups together in the middle of the coin. The water molecules form droplets because they are attracted to each other more than they are attracted to the surface they are on. This property of water molecules is called cohesion. In this glass, however, the water molecules are more attracted to the glass than they are to each other, so they spread out and fill the glass. If we pour out the water, the glass is still wet inside. This phenomenon is called adhesion. The word adhesion means to stick to something else. The molecules now have a stronger attraction to the glass's surface than to each other. Due to cohesion and adhesion, water is also able to move up tubes against gravity. The thinner the tube, the higher it can move up. This very special property of water is called capillarity. This animation shows how cohesion and adhesion assist in capillarity. Do you see that because water adheres to the side of the tube, it moves up, but because the molecules also stick to each other, the molecules in the middle are pulled up as well. Capillarity is very important for plants because it enables water to move up the stem into the higher parts of the plant. The final property we will investigate is the dissolving power of water. We know that water is a very good solvent because many substances can easily dissolve in water. But did you know that 50% of our blood is made up of water while the other 50% is made up of cells and proteins and dissolved ions? These dissolved ions and floating substances can be transported around the body and used where they are needed because of water's good dissolving abilities. I am sure that you'll agree that water is an incredibly amazing substance. Without it, there would be no life. Thanks, Nelly. Water is a truly amazing substance. We have seen that hydrogen bonds are strong intermolecular forces. Therefore, a lot of energy is required in order to separate the water molecules to get them to enter the gaseous phase. Just think how many water molecules there are in a liter of water. One liter of water has a mass of 1,000 grams. Since the molar mass of water is 18, this means there are about 55 moles of water in a liter. And there are Avogadro's number of molecules in a mole. So there are over 3 times 10 to the 25 molecules of water in a liter. 33 million, 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 million. That is a lot of molecules to separate. The energy required to separate molecules of a liquid so that it evaporates is called heat or vaporization. Hydrogen bonding in water ensures that water has an unusually high boiling point and heat of vaporization. 
a large proportion of the earth is covered by sea. The sea acts as a reservoir of this heat energy from the sun and is able to ensure that the earth has a moderate climate. So that brings us to the end of today's lesson. Make sure to try questions in the task video and look at the other lessons on the Mindset website. Until then, goodbye.